Welcome back to 13C. I know it's been a long time, but we are back and uh, it's been really crazy busy. There's been a lot of stuff going on uh, for those folks who knew a couple medical issues came up. Uh, those of you who reached out, thank you for your support. If not, I didn't make a big deal out of it or anything, but it's been a lot of stuff going on. Um, We'll catch you up on that at the end of the video, maybe if, if, if time allows. But for now, let's jump right into this video. And if you're interested, stick around to the end and we'll fill you in on some of the stuff that's going on, including the uh, office I recently, uh, or at least the first this year, uh, took public office. So we'll talk about that more at the end, maybe just touch on it briefly. So Mantis X Laser Academy is what we're going to be talking about here today. Right out of the gate, I want to say thank you to uh, Mantis for sending this out to us for T&E purposes. Came in at no cost to us. So uh, I want to clarify and get that right out of the gate here and preface before we get into the uh, into the video on this um, that that did come in uh, from them from TNE. So thank you so much. We appreciate it. Um, had a lot of fun with it. I'm just going to say that right out of the gate. We'll have our wrap up thoughts at the end uh, to kind of kind of encapsulate what's uh, what this has done. At this point, we've had it in for at least three months, maybe coming up on four months now. So we've had a lot of time and in interim and in some of the stuff we were going through coming home. I've done. Other than right before this video where I did 15 rounds actually live fire, I think in the past four months, I don't know that I've actually fired a single live round other than going out back here uh, and fired 15 rounds to reconfirm. I finally got the uh, Trijicon RMR2 back on here. You remember I had that Holosun on there. Did a video on that a long time ago. The plate on the bottom was rusting, the Holosun plate, not anything to do with this handgun. Uh, anyway, it doesn't let you co-witness the iron sights, the suppressor height sights and stuff, so I'm actually really happy I got that RMR2 back on there. Love that hollow sun, but just it's too high with that enclosed emitter. It's just it's not a right fit for me. In any event, I still like the optic, but just for a handgun, the way it fits for a daily carry, I tried. I tried for months and months and months to get used to that, but it's just not my thing. Gotta get back on this thing, so we'll, we'll wrap all that up later at the end. Anyway, the Mantis X Laser Academy, it is, works in conjunction with your phone, uh, uses these targets back here. We'll go through the targets. So there's two different versions. Uh, there's a, there's a um, uh, which, what do you, um, mobile version, which comes in a smaller pack that has targets that are about maybe a third of this size. Uh, and then there's the full package. So the black, we've got the black beard in as well. So we had a full set that included these full size targets which goes from everything you see up here from B27 targets, FBI qual targets, uh, IPSC targets, standard bullseyes, um, hostage targets, brain box targets, dartboard games if you want to play those, um, and then hunt, which is actually pretty cool. If you do some of those hunt games like uh, on cards and stuff, those are, you know, flip cards, you have a partner or something like that. Those are fun to do. Have somebody call out, you know, one square, rectangle, triangle, three. Uh, get your mind engaged before you're actually pressing those triggers. Those can have a huge impact. So as you can tell with these, like the B27s behind us, <clears throat> stuff like that, they are this size. So they're way smaller than what you would normally get. So it's kind of training at distance, but not at distance, so to speak. If you've ever done anything apple seed related, they do some 22 training where they have tiny, uh, really small targets that are set out about 10 yards, 25 to 25 yards, and you're shooting out, simulating distances, shooting out to 200. Obviously, this isn't for that, but the point there is <clears throat> you can do a lot of that simulation. So if you're shooting indoors at three or five yards on these smaller targets, you're going to get the benefits of what would be shooting at a longer distance outside. And we've touched on that in other videos. So I want to stay focused on the system here as best that I can as I'm already rambling. So anyway, <clears throat> let's talk about the Laser Academy system itself before we get into the Blackbeard. I don't really do unboxing videos or anything else, so we're not doing unboxing, but you, I need to at least show you what it comes with. So this would be the mobile version, and it comes with a tabletop tripod, a uh, little mount for it. This would be your dowel rod, this is for a handgun to push the laser cartridge out of your barrel when you're done. This is laser cartridge. I want nine millimeter. Most of my handguns are nine millimeter. I uh, pretty much everything I use for self-defense is nine millimeter. So for me, the nine millimeter made the most sense. Everything from 380 to 45 and pretty much everywhere in between. Uh, these are these, the smaller targets I was telling you about. This is a control target, by the way, you'll see it on the end here. Um, so you can start and stop using the laser in your handgun rather than touching your phone when you're doing the drills. If you don't want to, I find either way, I mean, you're right there next to it anyway, but if you're using a rifle or something like with a black beard that easily resets, it's much easier just to shoot the control target if you want to start and stop. It's like that ticky tack stuff to uh, 
to hold the targets up in place. Since I'm out in my barn, I really don't care if I'm using tape, so I've got tape folded over and taping those up. Saving this for, uh, for inside, like on drywall and stuff. That way, this stuff won't hurt your drywall if you're using tape. Be very careful, you're gonna use painter's tape or something if you're not gonna use something like that. Anyway, let's get this loaded up into the gun. So this is my IWI Masada. You've seen this combo for a very long time. Again, I'm glad to have the RMR2 back on there. Um, take your cartridge, make sure you're clear, put it in the barrel and then push it in with your finger uh, gently. So I try and push it in a little bit. Then I let it slide down on it very gently and then just kind of push it into place. Um, one of the reasons why I would rather do that and actually let this thing like slam forward is because obviously you've got your laser in here and you don't want to mess that up. So anyway, to reset it, you can just pull it back a little bit. You'll notice when you pull it back, there's no rim on that cartridge, so it's not gonna grab it and pull it out. That's why you need that wooden dowel. You would lock your slide back, use the wooden dowel through the bottom and then tap it out. So anyway, you see the laser come out right there. And then to reset it, just pull it back and your laser will fire out again. The system just picked that up. <laughs> I don't know if you heard it. Um, so anyway, it, and also one of the things I want to notice as we go through this, you'll notice uh, I had heard some folks complain that the phone seems to time out a little early, um, depending on when you're using the app. So what I found is that when you're in this mode right here, it won't time out. I'm going to back up so that I can show you what I'm talking about going back to the... When you get to this menu right here, and we'll show you in closer in, um, that is this menu is dependent upon the timeout on your phone. So if you have your phone set timeout on 15 seconds, it's going to time out on 15 seconds. So get in there if you're having that issue, open it up so it doesn't time out. This is on your select screen though. So when you're on your other one, it defaults to the in-app settings for what your timeout is. There you go. Let's briefly talk about the Blackbeard. So the Blackbeard drops into your rifle. What you have right here is your battery pack. You have your battery connectors, just charges with standard USB. Comes with a little USB cable. You will need a power block, you know, like the little power block you plug it into to charge it. And then to get this to work, um, to get it set up in your rifle, it's pretty easy. You just take out your, your charging handle and bolt carrier. And this is one piece that drops in right here. One thing I wanted to note right out of here, you'll see I put some grease in here. I'll put a picture of that. Uh, where to actually do it. I had an issue, <clears throat> I don't know, a couple months in where this wasn't fully resetting the trigger. I called up uh, Mantis X, I called up the customer hotline. Uh, they answered the phone, they sent me an email with where to apply some grease to this. And I applied a little liberal amount of grease in there and it worked well. It's important that if, uh, if you come up with that and you need to lube that, make sure you use grease. Do not use oil because oil could leak in there into the components. I used, and a shout out to a local guy here, Solid Funkiness, it's from, sounds a little weird, it's from Vulture Equipment Works, if you're familiar with them, they're uh, local to the Midwestern area around here, uh, not too far, I think they're actually still across the border in uh, occupied Illinois, but you know, I guess that is what it is, but uh, great guy who uh, runs that organization, and um, the grease seems to work really well also. So it's done that. You heard me just put that in there, reset the trigger when it goes in. And to get it to function, simply press. You can see the laser hitting every time you're doing it. It fires pretty quick. Remember I told you about your phone timing out. You can see it's already timed out. That Again, that's based on what your phone timeout is. I'm gonna hit the button and it'll wake back up. You'll be right back to it. So that's how this works, really easy for easy any of those to get them up and running. I'm just running this old school. This is kind of my beater tester rifle that I throw all kinds of stuff on when I'm just looking to do, you know, I really don't care about sending a ton of rounds down range for whatever I'm testing. Uh, that Palmetto State Armory, um, it's a PA-15, but I forget what this one is. This is a pretty darn base rifle except for the MOE stuff on here. Um, it does have that EP, uh, EPT trigger in here, which is nice, um, you know, for an upgraded trigger, but you know, it's not, it's not, it's not going to win any records for a trigger, but as far as for a, uh, enhanced mil spec type trigger, uh, that is super inexpensive. Can't hardly beat it. All right. So let's hit some of these features here really quickly and go down them. Cause I know I've already droned on. It's 
been a while since I did a video. I think you can tell my conciseness has probably dropped off. So let's try and hammer these down. So I talked about the targets. Some of those targets are specific uh, to certain drills that you run. So the Laser Academy, when you get Laser Academy, it will give you uh, an unlock code in there. Most of them, when you get, them, you get the Blackbeard, whatever it is, you should have an option to get the Laser Academy on there. Um, it will give you, and that, that unlocks a code which unlocks most of the features in the app. The app itself, I think there's three or four different ones that you can run for free in the app that work with any laser really system that you have. Uh, and then the Laser Academy then unlocks uh, all the other features in there so you can shoot multiple targets at once, open shooting, hostage targets, the hunt, um, any of those different ones, you'll be able to do that once you get your unlock code. Um, this this uh, will work in any of your AR uppers, so it doesn't matter whether it's piston or direct impingement. Uh, this is a DI upper. Most of my ARs are DI uppers. For what it's worth, I just, you know, if you're going to run a piston, why not run an AK, right? Something else. I digress. So anyway, um, when you get in the app, you have settings so that you can control how fast, how slow. Uh, the timer will go to countdown. So for example, if you're transitioning doing targets with this, where the Blackbeard's resetting your target and you're doing different drills from low ready, high ready, whatever you're gonna run, um, you can have it reset quicker if you're actually having to reholster your handgun and you're drawing uh, in and out of the holster and you have to reset that manually, you may wanna put just a slight break, uh, an extra half second, one second on that because as we all know, and to quote, I don't remember who the famous person said it, maybe Jeff Cooper, I don't remember, Colonel Jeff Cooper, that is. Um, no one ever won a gunfight from being the fastest to reholster. So whenever you're doing any of these drills, make sure you're staying on target with your, uh, with your techniques. Don't let your techniques suffer just to try and beat the clock. So um, what else do we have? You can also control your offset, so your hide over bore. We'll show you how to zero your laser in for your optics. So you're kind of, for this, you're never gonna get over this offset, right? So you, this is where the center of the laser, your red dot is right here. This is where the center of your barrel is right here. That laser's coming out. You're never at this distance going to be able to adjust this laser to be able to have enough travel to get up to meet where your dot is. And of course, you don't wanna take all the stuff out of your dot to try and zero your dot to your laser. So you're gonna have that offset. So what you can do is you've got two options. You can either just live with the offset like you would um, if you're you know, gonna be indoors anyway, and remember that you've got that inch and a half, two inch offset, so you have to hold for that if you're encountering someone in these close distances, three, five, seven, 10, you know, 25 yards, whatever it is. Uh, well, out you know, 25, you're starting to drop off, but the point there is you can adjust this to it so that you're there. There's also a little adjustment in here so that you can control your windage right to left, which that is gonna be a little important because you wanna make sure your left to right, your windage on your laser is lined up with, you know, you're not, not worried about vertical height, but left to right, you wanna make sure that's lined up with where you're aiming so that you don't get any training scars or anything else from that. So we'll show you how to do that in a minute as well. I've used, I sh if you follow the channel, you know I'm not a fan of lasers mounted onto weapons, not in laser training systems, but using lasers on your guns because your eyes are constantly chasing that laser. And one of the other issues with a laser type system that you're training, if you don't have an app or something that's going to give you that feed, something that's gonna give you that feedback so you don't have to watch for the laser, is that your eye winds up looking for that laser instead of focusing on either your front sight or your red dot or whatever sighting system that you're using and that you're using in. So this overcomes that because I can in fact focus on my fundamentals, whether I'm focusing hard focus on the front sight, whether I'm looking at uh, the target with the dot superimposed on it, whatever the case may be, because when you use a red dot, that's what you should be doing. You should look at your target and then putting your dot, you know, in front of it, you're not staring at the dot and then putting it the, right. We've gone into that too. I won't re rehash into that. But the important thing is, is that you can then focus on whatever you visually need to be seeing on your trigger press, all your other fundamentals, and you're not looking for that laser seeing, oh, where did the laser hit? Where was I? because the app will tell you, which is really important, I think, for that. One last thing on the uh, full system, not only does it come with those larger targets, uh, but it also comes with the tripod stand and mount that you see right here that I have my phone on. So you don't, have, you know, the tabletop is in that kind of portable travel version. This is, this, this one is on the bigger one. One thing that I did notice with this is, this is not the world's, in the bigger version, this is not the world's sturdiest tripod. It's, it's very lightweight, it folds up really nice and compact, compactly, makes it easy to travel with, virtually weighs nothing when you throw it in your bag, but it's pretty 
almost want to call it flimsy. And that's that. That's my only dig about the system. Again, you're you're not buying it for the tripod. It comes with it. You know, it's it is what it is. If you have your own tripod, like I've got some tripods for cameras, um, much sturdier, much better way to mount that up. It uses a standard mounting thing on there, uh, so you can put it on your own tripod if you wanted to. And the only reason why I mention that is. If you wind up having like, I've got cats out here in the barn. Um, I've got them locked in the uh, locked in the uh, storeroom back there right now with a little food and water and lights on in there for them. They're fine. But the reason is, is because they like to walk up and rub up on things. And if they're rubbing up on this, it, I, they haven't knocked it over, but it moves it enough that uh, it has to recalibrate, you know, for the targets because it picks up those QR codes and it frames everything up. And that actually is enough shifting to cause it to reset. And that makes for a difficult video. So. <laughs> that's why we are there on that. So that's one of the nice things about, while it's unfortunate that it took me this long to get this, to get this video done, it's one of the nice things about having something for several months is that you really get to figure out the, the pluses and minuses, the uh, little quirks of different things to be able to do that. So for example, I'll tell you right out of the gate right now, if you're on a boat, let's say, <laughs> You want to do some training on a boat, this probably isn't going to work because that motion, unless you get everything exactly strapped down to the exact same pitch of how the boat's going to go, it's not going to quite work out. So I just wanted to throw that out there as, as an aside in case anybody likes to, I don't know, go out in the ocean and do training in their yacht. But I don't know. I don't have a yacht, so it is what it is, right? Here is our app. It's actually easier to use the app when it's facing upright, but every time I see anybody use it, uh, you know, I've watched one or two of the videos over the past several months, or at least before leading up to this end, everybody always has it in that vertical position, so I figured what the hell, we'll do this uh, horizontally. So you have all your different uh, challenges here. Here we have, uh, we're going to go to open shooting multi-target, which is going to be one of the easiest. Now I can't remember if this is set up for the offset on this or not. So again, always confirm before you're doing this that you have the training round or uh, your training laser in here and uh, and go with that. So let's see, uh, let's make sure this is uh, where it should be. Nine. I think we're pretty close here. Nine. Yeah, there we go, okay, good. All right, so we're, we're about where we should be. I do want to show you how to calibrate this. So if you want to calibrate it, hit settings, go to shoot to calibrate, and then wherever you want to hit is where you can move your crosshairs. Now, personally, you'll notice that moving this will make it recalibrate. So I am going to put that right on the X. All right, let's shoot it one more time. I'm going to hit apply. Now we should be going each time. So you get that visual feedback, uh, you know, if, if you're looking at the dot. But when you click on a tart, when you click on, oops, put my finger in front of it. So you can see where your rounds hit. Um, let's go ahead and run this a couple times. Put one into the head. Now we're going to hit stop. And here, here are the rounds. It will show you where each one hit if you click on it. And then the one that I sent into the head shows you where you hit on the head. But on this target, you're not supposed to be shooting the head. So obviously, we didn't get any points for it. But there you are. And then for each of your shots, you're there. You know what? To make this, let's do this instead. We're gonna put a couple of rounds, we'll put a, we'll walk down from the top. We'll go with seven, eight, nine. Seven, eight, nine. 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 All right, so, you'll see your times here. You'll see where each round hit. So if you wanna hit the first one, it'll show you where it hit. It'll show you where on the target in your ring, as well as where the actual round hit. 
and the same for each of these as you go down the line. So we're doing the multi-target right now. Let's run down the line here. And then I hit the stop, I shot the stop on the control target down there rather than hitting the app. So I'll show you round one, round two, round three, where you hit. You can highlight each one. It'll show you what target it was on, each of the different things there. It'll give, show you how many rounds you shot, your total score, and your total time. So a little bit of an idea there. Now, if you want to go back and you want to shoot something control-wise, you can hit shoot control on the target, which will bring you back and reset you and start the drill again. And then hit the control again and it'll bring you back instead of touching the thing if you wanted to i mean that's you know it's completely up to you how you want to run it each shot it will show you where on the target one two three you can bring those up and zoom in on them so it's it's, it's pretty neat now i want to actually show the blackbeard instead um because you know this is pretty straightforward the blackbeard really is a lot of fun so you can hit multiple multiple shots on this really quickly the thing with this is now we're going to have a different offset so we're going to have to recalibrate this um, we should anyway let's see all right so those are set up for sevens so we're going to hit settings or we're going to go to clear offset oh should probably hit stop bring up settings shoot to calibrate so we've got where we are on the 10 here we'll shoot it there we go we'll click apply all right here we go let's start And then you can hit stop or shoot the control thing. Either one. So it'll tell you again, your shots, your times, where you're at. These are kind of fun. Let's do something slightly, slightly different here though. We'll go back. We'll do a bullseye 10 shot. So for this, you'll notice it didn't select this one because this isn't part of the set. You have the control target where it highlights, and then we can shoot either of those two. So I'm just going to shoot the start from here. Ready. So I tried to fire those in there pretty quick just to give you an idea of just how quickly these will reset and just how quickly it'll pick up. I wanna go through a few of these here real quick. You can download the app for free and look at these. Uh, some of them will be locked if there says the Pro, which is the Laser Academy, but you have tutorials here on how to do it. You can adjust your shot detection feedback, uh, your sounds, everything else. You've got shots from the guard or low ready, holster draws, the hunt we talked about earlier, holster draw par-timed, um, you dual, do dueling high score, so you know you can have two different targets, one each shooting, each one back and forth, kind of dueling, kind of like a dueling tree, but you know virtually uh, here. You have different ones. You have <laughs> the Die Hard uh, one as well, compressed, compressed surprise break, close contact from holster, the bullseye, which we were running, you know, some of the bullseye stuff we were running earlier, your tutorial for it there, and then you have open shooting multi-target. So we're going to have a little bit of fun with the open shooting multi-target and the... Uh, Blackbeard here right now. I'm gonna back up past the camera just a little bit here so I can get out to about five yards. So I've got a good sweep here and I don't wind up tagging uh, any of the stuff in here. All right, so I can start it from here using the uh, laser by shooting the start stop. and then shoot the control target to stop. Or you could just shoot any of the little control circles, which are here, and stop it as well, or just use the big target, whichever, whichever you prefer. So 
here we are on our shots. It shows you exactly where each shot landed. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. How many did I do? Thirteen. And uh, you see there at the end as I sped up a little bit, I was dropping one or two of those. I got one eight and a couple of nines in there. I was able to hold steady at least on tens for the first, uh, I don't know, six, seven, whatever it was. So pretty neat what you're doing here. You know what? Here, let me readjust this camera. Bottom line on this. I had a lot of fun doing dry practice. One of the things that if you're like me, getting down, I normally do dry practice in the basement. I'll put a small little uh, dot on the wall and I'll do my draws and stuff like that. Uh, and, you know, trigger control, stuff like that. Uh, but you're only, without knowing being positive, let me rephrase that, um, exactly where you were aiming when that, when you broke that trigger, um, you know, how much does dry practice help? I think it helps a ton, I think for fundamentals, especially without using a laser system, especially being able to have those good clean draws, you need those repetitions, you need those built in, but if you're like me, you find them kind of boring. So this was a good distraction as, you know, this time of year, between the wet rain, sleet, all that horrible crap that's out there, you don't spend a lot of time shooting, plus all the other stuff that was going on, just some medical issues in the family and stuff that, uh, that, that, that we went through over this past month or two, spent some nights in the ER and whatnot, but everything's going better, so thank you for those who reached out. Everything's we've got more tests and stuff to do, but everything's looking uh, pretty good for that here with the family, so I'm, I'm really positive and bright on uh, how our future's gonna be on that. But that said, for about the past four months, I don't think I put a single live round down range other than right before I came out to do this video. So I'd mentioned to you that I'd switched over my RMR to, to my, back to my RMR2. Um, I like it, it's, you know, it's, it's proven, it's battle proven um, design. I beat the hell out of this thing. I really like it um, and I can cool it. It's my iron sights. I like, there's a lot of stuff that I like about it. Um, I really miss that circle dot reticle, but it is what it is. So this is what I shot earlier today for the 15 rounds that I put down range. There were 10 uh, relatively quick presses after I got the first in and made sure it was actually dialed in. And then our five, which were a little slower at seven yards. So that gives you some idea of for the rounds 11 through 15 or 10 through 15, whatever it is. Um, Four basically the same hole in that little guy. I wouldn't worry about that little guy down there. Um, this also actually, interestingly enough, speaks to how that RMR2, when I mounted it back on the Masada and bolted it back down, I didn't adjust it at all. So it's been off. It hasn't been on any other weapon, but it's been off for the past six, seven, eight months. I have no idea how long it's been, eight months at least. Um, maybe a year. I don't know. It's been a while. However long that video was when I did this is how long the the uh, hollow sun uh, enclosed emitter was on there, but threw it back on there and it is still zeroed after coming off and going back on. So that speaks to the mounting system for the Masada and the RMR2. In any event, not having fired a single round, live round in whatever that was, about four months, I think it's helping. I think it helps. I think it, I, I'm happy with it. I couldn't really ask for much more than that. That's kind of the, the proof in the pudding, if you will, that at least it's helped me to keep my skills uh, up and using it intermittently over these past four months. Um, I think that basically covers pretty much everything. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. I'm going to continue using this over the next couple of months and we'll see how much longer into the future. Uh, I dig it. I, the distances you have in your house, whether it's three yards, you can get five, six, seven you know, out to 10 if you wanted to, or however far. This laser, these lasers, both the Mantis X, uh, both the pistol version uh, cartridge and the one that's in the Blackbeard shoot out at distance. Um, I've, re I've, well, not using the app registering out to 200 yards, but with the naked eye at night, shooting and bouncing off of something, you know, cause I live out here on the farm, so we've got plenty of acreage out here. Um, you're able to see that dot register a distance. So that dot gets thrown out there pretty far. Uh, so it's a solid, uh, it's a solid system in that. If I have any issues, uh, follow us, 13cgunreviews.com. Um, we need to really start updating that website as well. Check out our social media, facebook.com forward slash gun reviews. I hate Facebook, but it is what it is. So many people use it. Uh, Instagram, we are 13C Media, 13C Media. Um, and the, over this past year, we got zucked uh, on our thing. So, you know, it's five digits worth of subscribers, gone. We're in like the hundred-ish range, whatever it is now. Um, 
I don't know, maybe we're back up to 1,000, I don't know. But of course, obviously they throttle it because we have decent content and for what it's worth, I'm barely posting once a week on there anyway. So we're gonna try and keep that up. I teased you guys at the very beginning. Um, last year, uh, toward the beginning of last year, I found out um, the opponent here for county commissioner was running unopposed. Now, I haven't gotten a whole lot into politics. I try and keep these two things separate from the channel. I don't like to, well, unless it's directly Second Amendment related, talk about it here. But anyway, I found out it's going to be running unopposed. So within 24 hours of the filing deadline, I decided to throw my hat in the ring. Um, I fought like hell. I uncovered a bunch of stuff, which led to me uh, having a pretty solid defeat of my opponent. And last November, I was elected county commissioner. I was at, uh, here in the county. Uh, there's three county commissioners in Indiana. I am one of three in our county. Um, it's really important, to, depending on what state you live in, depends on if you have commissioners or what's going on uh, for your thing. But commissioners control most of the uh, and, and write the legislation for the unincorporated areas of the county. So if you want to see or not see shooting ban in your county, let's say, pay attention to what your county commissioners are doing or whatever that that body is that's in your area. It was one of the things uh, that, uh, that, that that led to uh, my victory was uh, my opponent's uh, anti-gun stance when it came to uh, some of the shooting ordinance from a couple years ago. So um, you can do it. I got inspired to run based upon a couple of different things that I had seen, uh, folks who didn't have any uh, background, but decided to kind of put their uh, their proverbial money where their mouth was. In my case, I was outspent 12 to 1 by my opponent, but uh, the voters saw through what was happening, and here I am now. I'm actually currently in a little bit of a battle against some of the corruption in this county trying to put an end to it, so it's going to be interesting to see uh, exactly how we can wrap that up here this year. I think, uh, I think big things are going to happen here. In any event, thank you so much for your support. Try not to get political here if it's not directly related to the Second Amendment. I want to give you guys some update on what's going on in my life and why I just have not had time to get these videos out and done. Um, so I am planning on stepping up some of that here as we move forward into the next year. A couple of things have kind of resolved themselves, which are good, which will give me a little bit more of that extra free time back uh, to be able to do stuff like this. But again, the content is going to be not as heavy as it used to be, but we're trying to ramp that back up as best we can here um, as things move forward. I wanna thank you guys so much for your support. If you like our patches and stuff, you can head to our uh, swag shop. It's on Big Cartel. Uh, it's 13c.bigcartel.com. We'll put the links down below. Uh, pick up the, you know, we still have some fight soaps that are left and pat custom patches you won't find anywhere else. Um, it's all merch directly to us. 1776 United still carries our channel shirts. Huge thank you to them. I'm wearing one of their hoodies uh, right now underneath my jacket. So if you want a shirt from the channel, head to 1776united.com uh, and you can check uh, code, uh, what our current code is right now to get, get a little bit of uh, money off when you buy. We'll try and put that down below so that you have that as well. Thanks again, everyone. We really appreciate it. Um, take care, stay safe. Um, as Churchill said, there's nothing to fear but fear itself. Keep your chins up and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks.